Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Pathfinder Friday. Today, we are going to be talking about some new stuff out of the Game Mastery Guide. We're going to be talking about infiltrations, infiltrations and chases and kind of running you through what those might look like at your table. I'm Logan Bonner. I'm the Pathfinder lead designer. And I'm John Compton. I'm a Starfinder senior developer. Uh, and John wrote the original version of the infiltration rules that appeared in uh, the Age of, uh, Age of Ashes Adventure Path. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's going to be our resident expert on that system. Yeah, so what we're looking at doing here today is not just explaining like what these systems are, because we're hoping that by the end of this, or maybe already, you have the book, and you yeah. can go and explore these on your own. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can illustrate all these concepts before you as we uh, noodle around a little bit with some of our yeah. pre-generated characters, show you how easy it can be to create your own heists, your own infiltrations, your own chases, and even weave them together into to a unified story. Yeah. Uh, and we're also, you might notice that uh, we've got this, uh, the beautiful uh, Carolina game tables table here that uh, is a fairly new addition to the office. And the first bit of this, we're not really going to use it, but uh, we're going to get on, we're going to kind of use, uh, use it a little bit more in the second part of the stream. Um, one of the notable things about the, uh, uh, the chase rules and the infiltration rules is they're both based on the victory point system that is in Game Mastery Guide. So the victory point system is kind of this uh, basic framework you can make to uh, do all sorts of challenges that aren't combat to kind of measure progress if you really want to uh, like know how the PCs have done on something and you want to make it a little more concrete for them, uh, especially if you're going to run like a longer sequence of the of the game and like doing a chase or an infiltration or something like that. So we're going to. Uh, the basics of that are there are different ways to kind of accrue points as you play, and you're going to see two different implementations of that between infiltrations and chases. And victory points basically boil down to using the four tiers of success. And if you get a critical success, you're earning two victory points. If you get a success, you're earning one. A failure, okay, nothing's really happening. And if it's critical failure, you're losing a victory point. Yeah. And a lot of these systems that we're going to show today are really riffing off of yeah. that same four-point uh, score. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is an infiltration, and we've kind of uh, we've got a couple different options that we want people to kind of uh, tell us their preference of what they'd like to see. John, do you want to give them their options? Yeah, so basically what we're going to be doing is uh, Logan will eventually be showing off one of our subsystems. I'm going to see about starting off with infiltrations, and I want some audience help because I want to know what we're sending Logan and his hapless party through today. Yes. Uh, we're going to have two major options. One of them is that we're going to be sending him into a noble's manor where a party is going on, and he's there to uh, steal something. Uh, the other possibility is that Logan and his party are going to be sneaking into some form of like religious cult, or maybe it's a mystery cult, and trying to blend in and get to some objective toward the very end. So basically, I want to let you, or I want to know from you in the comments: Are we doing a noble's manor, or are we doing a cult? <clears throat> Uh, and, and so you know who's getting into this. Uh, we're gonna we're, we're kind of you know kind of faking this. We aren't gonna play out all the rules, but we kind of wanted to put together a little party to see if kind of like what are our options based on their character. Uh, so first of all, to help with his infiltration, we have Mauriciel the Rogue. Um, you know, good at stealth, uh, good at uh, various other thievery, roguey things. Uh, accompanying her is Kyra the cleric, uh, cleric of Saren Ray. Accompanying them is, uh, oh, well, Fumbus, Fumbus the Goblin Alchemist is going. Um, <laughs> great at blowing things up. I don't know about uh, about sneakily uh, infiltrating things as much. And, oh, and Amiri uh, the Barbarian is also going to be infiltrating uh, either the manor or the cult. Uh, so, you know, uh, all characters get to participate in infiltrations and chases. Um, some of them better at certain types of uh, encounters than others. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of see see how things go for this kind of motley crew. And speaking of uh, of, of mixed uh, fun times, I mean, I'm seeing that right now it's a tie between manor and cult. I think I've counted six of each. So, okay. yeah, nobody has an elephant companion, but we do have Sorry. a mirror. So I think we're in, yeah. we're in good shape there. Uh, so at this point, I'm kind of just up for rolling it. Uh, All right. <clears throat> All right, so <laughs> see, you hold on. Official Paizo is not allowed to vote. Hey, I want to vote too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do a, a high roll. Is going to be a cult. Okay, so, eleven through twenty. All right, it's a seventeen. We're totally going and infiltrating a cult. All right. <clears throat> All right, so. Um, 
your party has basically been uh, tasked with this terrible goal because the issue is that the cult has so many cults. By this point, basically okay. the entire town has joined in this thing in one way or another. Uh, so just kicking in the door, not going to work here. We're going to have to see about sneaking in and um, probably laying low until mm. we can get to uh, the end where we're hoping to get away with their little statuette, which is going to be the key to summoning okay. whatever demi-deity, demon right. lord thing it is that they're up to. Um, and we might be able to find out a little bit more about that beforehand. Speaking about beforehand, though, mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the different stages of an infiltration, because an infiltration has several different components. One of your key ones is really just more theoretical. It's an objective. What are we trying to do? Are we trying to steal something? Are we trying to get information? Are we trying to make a friend or make a contact? In this case, we're trying to make off with some sort of, you know, little Cthulhu statue or whatever yeah. it is. Um, so that's our objective. And you can have more than one objective if you need to. Um, I think for the moment, we'll keep things simple, but who knows how this develops. Uh, but then there are a couple of different stages that you can have mm -hmm. because <clears throat> you're going to have obstacles with all of these. Obstacles are the typical little challenges that you're going to have to overcome. You know, getting past the guards, opening a locked door, those sorts of things that would keep your party from moving forward in the action. But there are two other major pieces as well. One of them are uh, going to be co complications. Complications are things that Logan didn't necessarily know about, couldn't really predict, but they yeah. suddenly jump out at you as, oh no, deal with this on the fly sorts of catches. Yeah, it's kind of the things any, in any heist movie, they've got the plan, it's all perfectly figured out, and then they have to deal with the things that, that come flying at them during the exactly. course of the heist. We have the perfectly working tool, or we know the timeline that we're going to work toward, but, you know, Amiri has to bust down the door at exactly the right time, but where's Amiri yeah. sort of thing? Um, so we have complications, and we also have opportunities. Opportunities are much nicer. Opportunities take a little bit of time in your heist, but if you succeed at them, then you might gain some sort of uh, benefit. A benefit might give you a bit of an edge in the ongoing heist. It might even be something that opens up treasure that you didn't expect to find, but now you can add to your loot. Uh, things like that are going to be opportunities. Um, I mentioned edges, though, and that brings up two other pieces. Edges, real easy thing to use. An edge or an edge point is just a floating thing, kind of like a hero point is, but it's for your group during the infiltration. And an edge point basically says, wow, I just failed or critically failed a role. Fortunately, we had this advantage on our side, yeah. and I'm going to spend this edge point to turn that, that failure or critical failure into a success. Um, so it could be that like you're finding the the you're finding the password to get into this mm. uh, cult or something like that, and by knowing that password yeah. and being able to drop it once, yeah. you f you fail to talk your way in, but like, what? But secret handshake. Yeah. Yeah. So those are edge points, and then the other thing that you can do that'll help you to gain edge is uh, preparation activities. So preparation activities would be like doing the legwork before you run the heist. It could be spying on the location. It could be forging documents so it looks like you have an invitation. It could be getting the right disguises. Stuff like that where you're clearly putting in the preparation work, so why don't you get something out of it? And the thing you get out are some of those edge points that you can use later as you need them. So again, just to review, we have an objective. To get to that objective, we're going to have to deal with three possible things, obstacles, complications, and opportunities. Yeah. And to help us along the way, we have preparation activities we can do beforehand that'll get us some wonderful edge points. So let's see about going through some of that. So Logan, we are in a creepy yeah. uh, backwoods creepy, little town, yeah. uh, which apparently, like, clearly three quarters or more of the townsfolk are in on the whole cult thing. Yeah. So what sorts of preparation activities do you think you might be able to pull off with your party? So I think because because everybody here like is so interlinked with this cult, it's it's kind of like a family affair almost. So I'm going to uh, try to find like somebody's distant relatives that they've never met, and we're going to try to pass some of the party off as as their relatives. Okay, so are you thinking this is going to be more of like genealogical research, or are you thinking more disguise based? Um, I th I think probably more research, unless there's somebody who's like, oh yes, they all have. Uh, a mole in the same place in their face, and then maybe we'll we'll try to disguise All Kyra. Right. I think this is mostly going to be – these are probably mostly humans, so Kyra and uh, Amiri might be a little better candidates to pass themselves off. Here. I assume that you have somebody who has society as one of their trained skills? Uh, I have 
Uh, Fumbus knows some about society. Okay. Uh, and Mauricio, uh, Fumbus is a little more knowledgeable. Okay, so one of the things that we're going to be doing with our with our infiltration here today is for some of these, we're just going to kind of do a diceless resolution. For some yeah. of these where Logan has some, you know, kind of wahoo ideas, we'll yeah. see about pulling in a die uh, just to resolve them. So I'm going to say that for the downtime that we're doing, the little downtime sequence mm-hmm. that we're doing beforehand, Fumbus is busy doing genealogical research. Right. What's another downtime thing that you might want to do to prepare uh, I think uh, yeah. another uh, type of research would be good for maybe Kyra to do is like look into this cult and their beliefs so they can kind of – they can fake it while they're in there. She'd be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> of course I'm wearing the red stockings that we're all required to. What, what kind of a fool would show up without their red stockings? Absolutely. All right. So uh, that sounds good. So I'm going to say that these are both things that your characters could have succeeded at. So let's go ahead and say that we're starting this infiltration with two edge points. Uh, So those are going to be Logan's to spend as he likes during this entire scene. Okay. So basically night is falling. Uh, You can see that there are all these cultists sort of funneling toward the largest building in town where they've Uh set up their whole chanting um, rituals. Clearly they're going to summon some sort of thing with the fiend trait uh, by the end of this. Something real big. Big and bad. So we don't we, like that at all. No. I mean, Amiri <clears throat> likes it a little bit because she wants to fight this big bad fiend, but everybody else is kind of let's let's prevention is is the goal here. Yeah, and that's one of those wonderful things about running infiltrations. You're gonna have some people in your party who are absolutely raring to do them. You're also gonna have a couple of players or characters at the table who are like, oh my gosh, why are we not rolling initiative? Uh and maybe Amiri's one of those today. But don't worry, she'll have her moment. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> So at this point, you can see that uh, not only are there masses of people who are wearing, you know, classic like hooded robes Uh, and they're uh, moving upward. There are also some folks who are talking to them briefly as they reach the main doors. Um, So it's almost like, you know, maybe they're they're having to say a password. Are they having to say something about – are they having to identify themselves? Are they pulling back their hoods? It's unclear quite what they're doing, but but there are guards to get past. But this – this building, it, it seems to be like a refurbished barn, so it has more than one door. Okay. So if you wanted to, you know, stretch it a little bit and not use the front door, that might be a possibility. I, I think uh, once we get to this place, Mauricio like sees the situation. She's like, "This is this is my jam." Okay. I'm going to do some rogue stuff. So she's going to kind of sneak around the back and kind of look at some of the other, the other possible means of entry. Okay. And then the uh, are the other three sort of waiting. Uh, outside or are they going uh, to I think they're like they're they're following her but like they didn't quite know what she was going to do so they're like oh oh I guess we're going this way now. Okay. So and that's one of the great things about these infiltrations because this is working on a little series of like miniature challenges. One, having a map isn't critical and two, splitting the party isn't all that bad. When we look at some of these obstacles, we're going to see two different types of obstacles. One of them are individual obstacles, which are things that Um, each person who's participating needs to do on their own, like, you know, sneaking past guards. You know, if one person in the party is sneaky, that doesn't buy everybody else a free pass. But then there are ones that are group challenges, where as long as you as a group get enough victory points or infiltration points as they are in this, then you're fine. For example, not everybody has to pick the lock on the door. As long as one of the folks does, then you're fine. Yeah, and everybody trying to, like, disguise themselves to get in, they might all have to make a check. But if they're going in the side entrance, they kind of get to jump past that part. Absolutely. So Mauricio has sneaked around uh, toward the side, and it does look as though, um, although there are two side doors that probably are going to get you deeper into this improvised temple, Mm -hmm. they sure are locked. Um, So this could be something – this is one of our first obstacles. So this is going to be a group obstacle where you could either be using something like athletics to bust down the door Mm -hmm. or you could be using thievery. And when we're creating the DCs for these, we're basically using the standard DCs for our level. We have fifth level pregens here. So I'm going to use the uh, values that are found on page 503 of the core rulebook. That's DC 20 for us. Um, So we're looking at probably DC 20 for these. Um, and I think Amiri kind of says like, all right, you can try to unlock that, but I'm going to give you until the count of, you know, <laughs> until I'm just going to bust it down. No pressure. Uh, but Mauricio <laughs> has a thievery of plus 13. Okay. So, so, so I, I'm going to say that Mauricio is able to get past this lock. No problem, which is great because when it comes to dealing with, um, these obstacles or any of these challenges that happen in infiltrations, one of the other tropes that we haven't really addressed yet is what if. What if the other people find out we're here? Mm -hmm. 
And that's reflected through a thing called awareness points. So every time we have a round of activity, the party is gaining one awareness point. Plus, every time they botch one of their complications or when they do certain really loud behaviors um, or if they really fumble one of their challenges, they can gain awareness points from that, too. For example, if Amiri had said, I'm just going to bust down the door and she bounced right off and the whole barn rattled. Yeah. That's probably getting awareness points. And honestly, even if she busted it down, there might she might get one just because it's like there's no way to keep anybody from noticing that. Exactly. So, but fortunately, you've been able to open up the side of this barn and, and uh, slide open the door. Okay, so it's it's sort of like uh, being in a theater where you're in one of the wings, uh -huh. and uh, it looks like there's a large congregation of uh, people who are arrayed and, and starting mm -hmm. to line up for worship, and and their uh, cultic okay. there's chanting happening already. There are. Uh, several high priests who are up on the stage or an improvised stage area. But looking at the building, it looks like there's way more rooms back to the right, okay. uh, back behind stage, so to speak. Um, so what is it you want to be doing here? I mean, we have like we have these uh, lay congregants who mm -hmm. clearly seem to know what they're doing. Um, we have these very informed priest figures. Um, there seem to be a lot of rafters uh, up, up above, uh, and there seem to be possibly a couple of curtained passageways that are leading back further. Okay. So how do you want to go about this? Um, so I think uh, I think Marissa is going to like try to kind of sneak back those curtains uh, and have everybody else kind of stay out here to maybe uh, <clears throat> like keep everybody's attention out here. Um, and I think uh, Fumbus is going to use kind of like the fact that he's a goblin to his advantage. Sure. To kind of be like, kind of make an appearance and just kind of uh, get everybody talking about like, there's a goblin here? Who, who's this weirdo? Great. So what that says to me is that we have two obstacles that we're going to run simultaneously. Okay. One of them is going to be uh, sort of buying time is what I'll call it. Okay. Uh, so that seems to be what three of us are doing. And then we have Mauricio who's going to be doing the sneak backstage obstacle. Uh, so which of these do you want to resolve first? Um, let's do Fumbus first. Um, cool. So his, by this point, we've his started. His social skills are not amazing, generally speaking. Okay. Around, around like the plus one range. Ooh. Uh, his diplomacy is a little better. So, you know. I mean, one of the other things. best bet, probably. One of the other things you can consider, Logan, is that when it comes to running infiltrations and later on even chases if you have certain special abilities mm -hmm. uh certain spells certain items that might be just like the a great opportunity to do something that doesn't require a skill but could work then yeah i might look at that and say you know what if you want to expend that that would be worth a success or maybe if it's really good a critical success so i'm guessing speaking of which yeah uh Fumbus kind of like looks through his items that he's carrying, and uh, I'm guessing this cult has some like weird mystical texts and writing. They do. They seem to have several books up on the stage. A few people here. They don't have full books, but they seem to have like mm -hmm. sheets of of uh, liturgical chanting uh, and musical notes. And on top of that, there are a couple of braziers that are scattered about here that seem to be uh, wafting up some sort of smoky incense. Oh, nice. Um, so uh, Fumbus is going to kind of look at, kind of sidle up to one of the congregants and kind of like, oh, can I, you know, kind of look at their book. Uh, he pulls out a lesser comprehension elixir to uh -huh. let him read a language. Okay. Kind of pops off the top. He's like, uh, a little hair of the dog, you know, mm -hmm. and drinks it. And uh, it's like, oh, I love this part. And kind of is trying to, you know, uh, talk with them about like their favorite tenets of this horrible cult. And <laughs> your, you know. your sudden ability to fluently understand Aklo yeah. uh, is totally something that I think would work out well here. So I'm cool with that being one success or one infu infiltration okay. point that you're getting from this. Uh, what are, what are Kira and Amiri doing? What, how are they contributing to this group challenge? Uh, Kira, I think, um, is is feeling pretty confident in her research mm -hmm. that she did on this. Um, so she's going to kind of be trying to, you know, mimic their gestures and kind of like be, be the little, the perfect cultist, right. To really like fit in, like kind of overachiever uh, kind of status. Cultist pet. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think she's going to be kind of like using her religious knowledge that she's, uh, that she's worked up um, to help her out in this situation. That sounds pretty good, which means Amiri, what are you up to? Uh, I knew you were going to get to her eventually. Um, <laughs> Amiri, uh, well, she's got tanning lore, so she's going to hang out in the sun and, and roast up a little bit. No, um, <laughs> I think she's just going to kind of 
stand with her arms crossed near the side mm-hmm. uh, and just like anytime somebody looks at her, she's just going to give him the death stare to okay. kind of suggest, hey, of course I'm supposed to be here. Are you supposed to be here? Do you want to take this outside? The classic cultist behavior. Yeah. <laughs> Five o'clock by the flagpole with House of Relay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, ritual knife fight. Oh, ooh, yeah. That'd be a fun encounter. So, um, so I think that uh, Kira certainly is going to be able to contribute in a good way. I think for Amiri, the whole like mind your own business stare thing probably is not going to be that's something that's going to. Okay. Probably is not going to contribute any victory points to the situation, but that does bring us to Marisiel and whether or not you can get past. Uh-huh. So, uh, Marisiel, what's your plan for getting past this like swath of priests up on the uh, stage who are all mumbling and yeah. basically preparing their own reagents to summon who knows what? I think if they're putting all these reagents together and you know they're they're having to get this um, you know complex set of ritual elements together. I think if anything disrupts that, that's going to be they're going to get laser focused on that. Yeah. So I think she's going to try to create a diversion by like, like tossing a, a pebble to kind of knock over one of like the the one of my candles. Ritual candles. Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that that one sounds to me a little bit more exciting and challenging. So that was the one I want I want us to roll. Okay, for. we're going to roll for that. So uh, that sounds like a range attack to me. If you want to see about disrupting some of their stuff with okay. like a thrown attack, so. All Whatever right. your bonus is on throwing a dagger normally. Uh, plus 13 on a dagger. Okay, so I'm going to say this is standard difficulty. So, oh my gosh. Okay, so Logan has rolled a natural 20 as this is true. the first die roll on this table, I believe. <laughs> so uh, that's that's an auspicious start. It to seems all right. Yeah. So um, so just as Fumbus is reading Aklo, all the cultists are like, oh, wow, we're so envious of your ability to understand the <laughs> high liturgy of, of the tentacle face monster. Um, Kira is being perfect. Amiri is just kind of grumbling in a corner. Yeah. Uh, and Marisil, yeah, you knock one candle over. It topples into another candle and several others. And <laughs> basically all the priests are starting to like run in a circle trying to follow yeah. the, the domino effect. It's like, the oh. key, keystone cultists. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so everything's, everything's going to heck up on on stage, um, it seems like nobody's paying attention to any of the curtained yeah. walkways at this okay, point. Okay, good. So, uh, do you... Mauricio kind of like whispers under her voice, like, I told you nerds, this is what I'm good at, and oh, kind of God. goes back behind the curtain and starts starts snooping around. Great. So, at that point, we've basically finished up the second round of, um, of our infiltration. So, by now, because we've done two rounds, we're up to two, two awareness, awareness points. points. Just to give you a sense of how awareness points work, Every five awareness points for a typical infiltration is going to lead to some level of complication or or catch. For example, once we hit five, uh, Logan's party is going to get a minus one to all of their rolls, and I will automatically throw in a complication in addition to any of the others I might have done. Yeah. The idea is to sort of balance your pacing. So you might want to give a couple of obstacles every now and then, but then every once in a while, throw in a complication just to keep your party on their toes. Yeah. Like right now. Yeah, yeah. and any time it kind of like, sometimes you pre-plan the complications. It's like, we know that this, this weird NPC is going to show up at this time, and that's a problem. And sometimes it's like, well, Amiri, what you did worked, but also you drew some attention. Yeah. Exactly. So with that, uh, Mauricio was able to sneak on back, which means we're starting round three. And I'm going to start this before we get to any of our obstacle actions with a complication. So oh, oh, oh. being oh, no. being the perfect little cultist, uh-huh. um, one of the other cultists walks up to you okay. and says, Kira, is that, is that you? It's, it's me, Ryland. I remember how you converted me to the faith five years ago. I found a new faith. It's fun. It, they, they, they serve brownies. Um, like, wow, you too? This oh. is so cool. Uh, Did, does that mean you abandoned Saren Ray? He's saying way too loudly of a she, stage whisper. Uh, she grits her teeth really hard and says, <laughs> yes, I abandoned Saren Ray. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, that's going to go well with your edicts and, uh, and anathemas. Mm. Um, okay, so at this point, I'm going to say, Kira, that really sounds deceptive to me. It does. So um, She's uh, got a pretty good charisma, but not trained in deception. Okay, well, I'm going to have you roll a deception check anyway. Okay. So the way that uh, most complications work is if you get a success, you're able to bypass the complication or resolve it in some sort of safe way. If you fail, though, one awareness point. If you critically fail, which I'm sure Kira won't do, critical success or critical failure is two awareness points. When I roll this, the second 20, it's going to go great for her. I bet. 
Uh, that's a six. And when that you add your charisma? Uh, the, well, it's a nine. That is, uh, all right, that's a critical failure. So, however, however, Kira had an edge. Oh, that's from right. From her research that she did earlier into their tenets. So she kind of, you know, that, that meme of like the woman and it's got like the uh, geometric diagrams and she's thinking about them, doing various math equations. Kira kind of does some of that mm -hmm. uh, and is like, ah, but of course the tenets that I loved about Saren Ray, such as blah, 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 and blah, 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 fit so neatly into this that of course it was only the logical path to switch my allegiances here because uh, then, then I can ignore all these other parts I didn't like about the faith. So she kind of links the two. And since this guy is is well versed in Saren Ray's lore as well, probably mm -hmm. not as well versed as she is, uh, he can kind of see, oh, of course. That makes so much sense. You're right. Worshiping Saren Ray would lead to the absolutely uh, heretical burning of everyone we love and hold dear. That's wonderful. Thank you, Kira. Yes, I can't wait for all the sacrifices that are going to come up tonight. <laughs> it's going to be even better to have you by my side. Um, so, yes, you're able to resolve that complication. Um, so the party does not earn two awareness points, but we have lost one of our edge points yeah. and that is not coming back. All right. So this starts off our third round of this and, um, let's go ahead and see about doing maybe one or two more rounds of this and yeah. then we'll, we'll, we'll switch over to the chase. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, by this point, Marissa, you'll inside, you're seeing that, uh, there's a, a maze of different little passageways mm -hmm. that lead back to what looks like basically the storeroom for all of the highest, most important um, ritual objects, including right. uh, the brass uh, horned god statue that you're basically oh, okay. after. Yeah. Um, seems that it's so still that's, that's the only thing they can't easily replace. Definitely, and that's that is based on Kira's research. The thing that's going to be really important for their summoning the high and mighty demigod mm -hmm. to crush this county. Yeah, um, you can see that it's still kind of caked with reddish blood from the oh. last <laughs> last ritual. So that's a great sign. All right. Yeah. Um, so but, it's a uh, veteran of rituals. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in this case, though, um, you know that you need that. You're probably going to also need a couple of other pieces just to make sure they don't have all the ritual objects mm -hmm. or can't substitute in some stuff. So um, just finding all the stuff that you need to steal in here in a timely fashion is probably going to be a challenge in its own right. Okay. Um, right now, it's just you back here. Um, I don't know whether you want to, like, call for help or you're if you're happy with the other three doing their thing out there. Um, can I uh – Kind of do some searching on my own and then call for help if uh, yeah. if it seems like that's not going super well. Yeah, so your turn would be doing uh, this search. All right. Um, okay. And meanwhile, outside, before we resolve that, what do you want the other folks to be doing? Because uh, so, right now it seems that there's some ruckus going on when, and people are starting to gather around a bunch yeah. of your party members because they're all super cool now. I think uh, Fumbus is going to be very helpful mm -hmm. and is going to help them pick up all the candles and stuff that fell over. Oh, he's running the up ritual. to the stage. Uh, and while he's doing so, yeah, he kind of runs up there. He's like, oh, let me help. I can get under this table. You can't reach all these. So so he kind of goes into that table uh, and kind of, as he's getting up there, crunches an alchemist fire under his foot. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> so like the, uh, you know, they're trying to keep the candles from lighting everything on fire, but now things are definitely on fire. Okay. <laughs> and that's one of the wonderful things about infiltrations. <laughs> Sometimes uh, sometimes you do things nice and quiet and you avoid notice. Sometimes you just try to make a whole bunch yeah. of noise in a different place. Right. You make the right kind of notice in the right kind of area. Yeah. That is our hope, at least. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Amiri, you see that Fumbus is running off to stage and pulling stuff from his bag as yep. he does so. Uh, what does that mean uh, for you? Uh, so for Amiri, um, <laughs> like this is not entirely unexpected. Uh -huh. uh, not her first rodeo with Fumbus, I don't think. Um, so I think she is going to, she knows that Mercedes made it to the back. So she's going to start like clearing the way for the eventual exit. Okay. Um, so she uh, kind of walks through this kind of dense crowd of cultists uh, and kind of uh, is like, I left my bag over there. Uh, and this is just kind of like trying to like kind of bodily make them part so that she can get through 
uh, to kind of uh, get them a passageway when they when they need to run out of here. Okay, that sounds good. And that that basically starts up a different obstacle, but it's one that we would have otherwise had to resolve uh, later on, which would be basically clearing a path out because yeah. eventually we're going to have to get out of here. So if you want to make me uh, maybe what sort of skill would be uh, good I was for thinking this? athletics to just kind of. Athletics is something that Amiri would. Do you want me to roll for that? Yeah, go ahead and roll for that. Let's see how well you right. push people. Uh, 23. 23. So that's easily success. That's going to resolve that group obstacle. Um, and then Kira? Uh, I think she already went. Oh, yeah, yeah, because she was dealing with our complication. So uh, that means inside with Mauricio, can you find the idol? Uh, do you want me to roll for it? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Is that perception? Yeah, perception sounds wonderful. All right, she does have low light vision. Oh my it's dark back here. You're, just, you're good at rolling so these 20s, knows. Logan. So everybody knows. All right, so in this case, Mauricio... She said she was good at this, to I, be fair. She did. So once again, whispering nerds under her breath, uh, she reaches into several different chests, walks out with all of the unholy prayer beads and, and the yeah. whatnot. And um, you're able to sneak on out. And basically... This is the sort of thing that we could continue for a couple more rounds. We could build up some more awareness points, mm -hmm. build up more complications. But for the sake of time, I'm going to say that at this point, especially with Amiri clearing the way out, let's go ahead and say that we've sort of resolved a couple more stages of, yeah. of the infiltration. And, and, and you can also, like with anything, like if the PCs did really well or thought of something and you're just like, yeah, that kind of shortcuts the whole thing, you can always just say, like, yep, that worked. Absolutely. So at this point, um, all of your group is like starting to get out out of this uh, barn a temple um, and like part of the barn is on fire yeah. there. The chanting has gone from, you know, uh, exuberant to fearful. Yeah. Um, but you'd think that that would be enough to buy your escape with them paying attention to that. Uh, but two things are happening that are really concerning. Yeah. One of them, those guards up front that were sort of checking everybody's credentials, making sure they had all the cultist sh handshakes on the yeah. way in. Um, they seem to be watching for trouble and they, they're, they're pointing towards you and shouting something. Yeah. Um, but also the back of the barn is catching on fire and it's doing yeah. the flames. They're not just, you know, pointing toward the sky. They seem to be forming into something oh, as though that doesn't seem great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what you can't do with idols, maybe you can do by sacrificing all of your priests in a terrible conflagration. Oh, oh no. So it seems though something is forming and the guards seem to be aware of us. This seems like a bad situation that we need to get out of. All right. This is where I'm inclined to say this is no longer, longer an infiltration. This could be a combat if we wanted it to, but not today. I'm thinking this is a chase and we need all to get right. out of here. I think that is a great idea. And I think you, should take care of these idiots uh, to go into that chase. All right. So tell us how chases work, Logan. All right. So chases, similar to infiltrations, uh, use the uh, victory points, um, and you do a series of obstacles. This is a lot more linear because you're just kind of you're going from place to place in most chases. There's a, there's some advice in here if you do like split paths and shortcuts and stuff like that. But a basic chase is the party trying to either chase somebody down or race somebody or trying to get away from someone. And we kind of cover those different possibilities in the book. This one, you're going to be running away. Good. Uh, we're going to do a short chase, uh, which is usually six obstacles. Uh, and we've got some uh, flip tiles here that I'm just going to lay, lay out. So you can see we're, we're getting some use out of the table here. This, uh, this might be the first time we've put things on a, approximation of a grid. Uh, a chase doesn't normally doesn't use the f normal like grid rules of movement because uh, we want it to be a little more abstract and free flowing. But we're just going to use these as kind of like the representation of where the obstacles are to give you a little better uh, visual sense of where things are happening. So is that one going to fit on there? Not quite. We'll uh, we're good. Swap these in. There you go. That'll be good. All right. So uh, we're going to also use some minis to kind of represent where everybody is. So this is the pursuing force. Um, there are a few guards chasing you, but there's also this kind of flaming uh, avatar of the dark god that is uh, going to be nipping at your heels as well. Um, and it looks like it's kind of uh, it's not fully in our world. And so it's kind of following the cues of the people uh, who are chasing you. And they're kind of like directing, like, come on, this way. So they're kind of like, 
it's kind of like lumbering, uh, but it's like lighting roofs on fire as it goes. Because this is kind of like uh, a little bit of a rundown area of the city that you're running through. Um, Fumbus is so happy. We are going to be using, uh, for an extra kind of uh, aid, we're going to be using some of the chase cards uh, to represent the obstacles that you're facing. Uh, the chase cards are coming out next month, I believe. And they're a good way to like, you can just kind of make a deck of... Uh, of chases they have some nice art on them and they've got some samples of the dcs uh for checks you might use to get past the obstacle so uh there are going to be six of these ahead of you <clears throat> peyton has prepared some cards for us so peyton if you could tr throw up just the first of those the first is a crumbling wall and we're going to use this uh this is kind of the next thing ahead of you since you've got kind of a head start on the uh on the pursuing uh you know, avatar and uh, and guards, uh, you're going to get to your first because they're just far enough away from you that they're going to be a little ways away. And the way a round of a chase works is everybody uh, on the PC side is going to go and they're each going to get to attempt one check to overcome this. Um, and then after the PCs go, you kind of just do the, the chasing party automatically in most cases. Um, so they're just going to get to go ahead and move and catch up and catch up to you if you're still there. So you're going to have to Try Ooh. to make it through this obstacle. Uh, the crumbling wall, um, and as John was saying earlier, this is going to use kind of the standard um, set of rules for uh, rolls in uh, victory point things. So a critical success against this obstacle is going to get you two points to pass it. A success is going to get you one point. Uh, and then if you fail, you're not going to make any progress, and you're actually going to impede your progress if you critically fail by getting a, losing one chase point. If you see the numbers on that card, that is how many chase points it takes to cross. So you need to get four chase points total. Uh, we're not gonna track that visually, we're just gonna keep track of it ourselves. Um, the chase cards are a really nice aid to the system, but they aren't required to play it because you can, uh, they're, they're like a quick way to randomize things, but there's also a bunch of suggestions of different obstacles in the Game Mastery Guide itself. Uh, and you can just use those and build your chase that way. I get the impression that with this randomized chase card deck, we're going to learn some really exciting things about this town. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, I think this this first thing we're learning is pretty obvious. They've been so focused on the cult uh, and all their cultist things, they haven't been taking care of their infrastructure. And I think that might be a running theme. So there's this wall that is kind of like uh, uh, the side buildings, the walls have kind of collapsed, like throwing this debris into the street. And there's just kind of this uh, this big kind of uh, pile of rubble in front of you. So as you go, you get to decide in what order each of the characters is going to go. And if you finish an obstacle, you get to go on to the next one and start making progress on that one on the same round. Oh, good. So the better you do faster, you might be able to kind of save someone who's not great at this obstacle for a later one. Okay. Well, I feel that Amiri is going to be a really good fit for this, and she has been raring to go. She just wants okay. to knock She's something over. She's got some pent-up energy. She does. I mean... Normally, she'd want to punch this wall down. That doesn't It doesn't seem to be crumbling quite that much, but she's going to see about climbing over and be ready to basically hurl the rest of the party members okay. over. All right. So, uh, and you can see on the image of the card there, there's a, a, a athletics check to climb over it with a DC 13. Those are kind of stock options. Uh, you can always kind of add things if somebody tries something different. You know, like mm -hmm. if somebody tried to... Uh, use magic to levitate the rocks. That'd be a reasonable thing to do. But there are kind of like two main suggestions that are already on here. So go ahead and uh, uh, give me a check. So this is Athletics Plus 13. I sure did get a... You did not roll a one. All right, I got a 22. You got a 22. Uh, so that is not quite quite a critical success, but it is a success. Okay. So you've got one of those four points you need. All righty. Mauricio is also going to be pretty agile and is going to see about... Um, uh, she's going to see about vault, vaulting over as well. So she's right. plus 10. That's only a 14, though. I don't know that that's going to be good enough. Uh, for kind of getting over this wall, that's going to be enough. Uh, okay. Just barely, but uh, that's going to be one more success. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. Hey, Kira also has left. Uh, like, basically, we have this entire group going. They're all trying, desperately trying to <laughs> climb over. Yeah. I mean, did you see what's behind us? Yes, yeah. it's desperate. Uh, so she's going to get a 25. Oh, a 25. That's a critical success. Uh, Amir, uh, Kira is able to uh, not only pull herself over, but she notices that poor Fumbus is like scrabbling against the rocks and she kind of gives him a boost and chucks him over the top. So they have passed the first obstacle, so I'm going to move them ahead by one step. Uh, and these are not, like I said, these are just kind of representing the, the general distance you've moved. So each of these tiles is going to be one obstacle passed. So, you know, the wall was here and you passed it. And you still have Fumbus who can still take an action. So let's get that next card up there, Peyton. And 
Oh, <laughs> another <laughs> wall. Oh, no. This one, this one, way nastier. Oh gosh. Um, this is a this is a much higher level obstacle. So this one's going to be more of a challenge. Yeah, no kidding. This is um, wow. We we bypassed one wall to get to a different. This I see it, what this town exploits. It, it might be time to improvise for Fumbus. It might be. Uh, so taking a quick look, I don't know that my bombs alone are going to be able to um, to solve this. But I that that's not how alchemists think, John. Come on, bombs <laughs> can solve any problem. Can bombs solve a wall? <laughs> uh, so if I wanted to bomb this wall, what would I need to do? Um, I think you're just going to make an attack roll against it, and you're going to try to kind of aim it in the right spot to undermine its structural integrity. And nothing says easier to climb like a crumbling wall. Okay, fine. Yeah. I will throw a bomb at this wall. There's, there are bigger handholds, at least. <sighs> Boom! All right, that gets me a 21 on my like, That really sounded like uh, a bomb being thrown against a wall, actually. The table All has right. good resonance. So you've made one progress toward passing this wall. So you've got three more to go. But that's all the PCs. Mm -hmm. So now the adversary goes. We're using a Hezru because I didn't I didn't know what we were gonna face. Uh, so let's say that the uh, the fiery avatar is about the same size as this Hezru. Kind of floats forward, lighting things on fire as it goes, and kind of uh, settling here and kind of uh, you know grinning at you evilly. I don't get it. It doesn't have to climb anything. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I see why it's moving forward so quickly. Yeah, you can see all the, like, the timbers in that fallen wall are just lit up and they're are smoking and uh, starting to burn. Well, it, it gives me some life to know that this towering wall is about to become a burning wall. Yeah. So I'll take it. Let's just hope you don't have to come back this way. Uh, oh, gosh. Hopefully not. All right. So if I have, uh, I have a new turn, right? Yep. So, uh, uh, yep. And you've got everybody can go again. I mean, I'm really intrigued looking at this chase card that it says there's a possibility of finding a secret passage uh -huh. or maybe finding a way around. And I think that's just the sort of thing that Kira would be really good at. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have her look She's for pretty her. perceptive, so. Yeah. yeah she maybe can she can find a better path. She's you're also, if there's a spell that you think would help, you can, you're welcome to, to cast that as well. I'm not sure what all she has in her uh, yeah, She has a lot of spells. Like if this were an undead wall, I would be there. But yeah. I don't know that her Searing Light spell or Restoration is going to help out here. Yeah. Fair enough. So she's going to see about looking. So, it's a natural one. That, uh, so that is a, a natural one. Excuse me, a 14. A 14. Um, well, that is a critical failure. Okay. So you have, uh, you're, you're wasting all this time looking for this secret passage. Has undone the progress that Fumbus made. Um, and everybody's kind of like trying to get her back on target. Well, basically, she said, I found, a, I found a lower point in the wall. She says, drawing people away from the flaming handholds. Yeah. So basically, yeah, we're starting over yeah, from Fumbus square one. Yeah, Fumbus is kind of hopping and like, but over there. Ah, uh, Kira, why? Okay, Amiri's <laughs> going to try and climb. Athletics. That's a 29. Uh, 29? All right, so that's a critical success. Good. So Amiri is just like... Uh, why did you waste my time with this? She kind of, you know. cleric Yeah. <laughs> fly, flings herself up to the top, uh, throws down a rope to kind of help other people up, uh, and kind of gets the whole party, like, uh, Mauricio's kind of on her own, but she's got uh, uh, Kira and uh, Fumbus pretty close to getting out of there. Yeah, I think that... Uh I think that Mauricio has seen that how well Amiri scrabbled over the walls is not going to be outdone by a barbarian. I mean, skills are a rogue thing. Yeah. And that's what she's here to do. So she's going to do athletics as well. That gets uh, an 18. Uh, an 18 is enough to get her up there. So you've got okay. one one last shot. Which Fumbus needs to get that last chase point uh, if they're Fumbus. to get past. Uh, Fumbus, don't mess us up. Fumbus can. Fumbus is good at climbing. Fumbus is good at sneaking. I don't think we can cook our way past this problem, so... Uh. What's, what's he doing? I'm going to climb. I'm going to climb. All right, Fumbus. My little goblin hands. That's a 15 on the die, which gets me a 23. All right. Uh, Fumbus has uh, cr critically succeeded to get over this towering wall. <gasps> uh, the burning handholds made it just like, hey, they're burning. I love it. Um, so the extra success isn't going to get you anything because anything more because uh, you're moving on to another obstacle. So you can't kind of like maintain your extra successes over to the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have passed that one. So we're ready for the next obstacle as the, the beast kind of comes up to this uh, wall and starts to just kind of move its hands through the middle and just kind of parts it oh. like putting your hands through like through butter like a hot knife through butter and just kind of oh gosh uh, kind of pulls it in two different directions so the um the end stage of this chase well oh you've encountered a gang of ruffians oh, uh, the some of the few people who are not in this cult 
uh, are just kind of uh, street punks who are going to try to waylay you. They And they, of course, care nothing for such things as giant flaming monsters. Um, so one thing I want to mention for this chase, the end point of your chase is usually going to be like the, des the safe house you're trying to get back to. Uh, and most chases also end if you get uh, three obstacles ahead of your opposition because at that point they're likely to just kind of give up or you've got such a lead they're not going to be able to catch back up to you. I mean, with, with how my roles have been going, I mean, the, this this crowd is always just one step away yeah. from me. So and, this is and tense. I'm going to say like at the end, that is your headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kira has already kind of set it up as like a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So you know that like this evil creature, once it gets there, kind of since it's, it's kind of weak, since it's not a full manifestation, once it gets there, it's just going to evaporate against the, the power of your, your serenic magic. And then we can punch some cultists. Woo! Yes. All right, great. Some cultists. In the meantime, though, we have all these ruffians who apparently the counter culture in this town is anti-cultist and yeah. with all of our disguises that we were wearing earlier <laughs> yeah we, that's a bit of a problem yeah. it, it really is um y you look the look yeah um so i th i think this is a situation where um forthright honesty is going to be the right way okay um, i think the cura really wants to see about talking them down by like Sharing her right. Saren Ray. Like, I'm not really a cultist. I'm not really I love a cultist. Saren Ray. Like, Check out the scimitar. I know I lied. I know I should be losing right. my cleric powers right. any moment so, now. Uh, but give me a diplomacy check. I'm going to give you a diplomacy check. Plus 10. I get a 16. All right. Um, so, uh, and I'm kind of, since I'm using the card, I'm going to kind of extrapolate from the uh, DCs that are on there and say it's a DC 15. Okay. And so she succeeds uh, with the gang of ruffians and they're like, Maybe you're not so bad, but we do still kind of want to beat you up. And there are all the people behind us. Yeah. So, all right. But but Kira's starting to make some uh, progress. That's that's pretty good. I mean, Amiri is tired of just this simple talking times. Uh -huh. If they're not going to step aside, then she will shout them aside. Okay. And she wants to use intimidation to right. see about scaring these, me that these punks aside. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm going to say their deception DC on there of 13 is probably about the same as their uh, their will save. So I'm going to say it's against that. Okay. Well, I get a 21. All right. A 21. That is a success, but not a critical success. But they're kind of like, I don't I don't know if we want to mess with these people. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the little one. We can probably take that one. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, Mauricio is going to see about using this distraction of the others to see about getting ahead uh, okay. I, I see i like that the, there's this idea of sneaking past them on the card and mm -hmm. i think that the way that i'd use that to help the rest of the party is to be using mercy to sneak ahead to see what the next you know obstacles are and, and where uh -huh. to go from here and use that as sort of our way of getting an advantage here okay so she's going to make a stealth check that gets me oh, a geez. 32 uh, all right, a 32. So uh, 23 would have been a critical success, or uh, sorry, 25. So she has critically succeeded, and uh, that is going to end the danger of the Gang of Ruffians. Um, so they they kind of are, uh, you know, they uh, kind of disperse after all this, like, well, these people are weird. We got to just get out of here, uh, especially because we're not going to have time to deal with this before that thing comes and eats us. <clears throat> so they just kind of flee off into abandoned buildings nearby, and you have passed that obstacle. Yeah, and now Fumbus can lead the way because yes. Fumbus is great at leading. <clears throat> Let's see the next obstacle, please. Uh, and as uh, as Mauricio scouts ahead, she says, like, oh, there's a fruit cart that's blocking the way but the other passageway is like really dangerous you definitely don't want to go there so they direct themselves toward this cart full of delicious succulent fruit i like how the alternate pet routes are like <laughs> fruit cart or snakes snake cart <laughs> great um all the all <laughs> my cabbages oh no uh okay so uh gosh can we really uh, how many more of these alchemist fires do i really have uh, uh, I think you've only used one so far. So. Uh, and I used one on the stage. So yeah. I have one left. Uh, I feel that... Well, you've got quick alchemy too. So yeah, I, I feel you, you've that still got all those points worth of... A... Like bananas are an obstacle. Uh -huh. Burning bananas are soon to not be an obstacle. And <laughs> okay. since, since Fumbus got it's here like, first, uh -huh. I figure that if he blows them up now, there'll be a, just a split second for them to burn down right. enough that we can okay. get past. So I'm hoping to throw another uh, moderate alchemist fire, which would be my third and last one. All right, give me an attack roll. Bah, that's going to be a 27. 27, all right. So that's going to be a critical success. Um, it's actually like the, the DC for an attack roll is probably a little higher than these even on here, but that's still going to be a critical success because it'd probably be like a DC 17. Excellent. Uh, so Fumbus makes a fruit cocktail. 
uh-huh. uh, spontaneous fruit, fruit cocktail shower for everybody. Um, how, of how, course, how, everybody how. else is behind Fumbus a little bit, but not far enough to not get totally pelted with sticky, exploded fruit. We have a new disguise. <laughs> You're fruit monsters. So you've got two chase points on this one already, and you've still got... Uh, uh, you still got your next round to deal with it. Yep. As the uh, the flame beast kind of comes closer, uh, it is uh, just far enough away that the fruit come that comes flying at it uh, kind of burns up into ash as it enters its kind of flaming aura that was, doesn't quite spatter upon the the evil creature. And here, Fumbus was really hoping that in the name of science, we'd be able to see if fruit could fly through this monster or if it was solid enough to stop it. <laughs> One day. All right. One day, science will know. One day science will know. Um, so as everybody else arrives to see burning wreckage of a fruit cart, um, this is – Amiri is going to just throw the wreckage aside and just clear the remains of uh-huh. it out of the way. So I'm going to see about using athletics to hurl a cart because okay. apparently in a chase, there's nothing athletics can't solve. <laughs> Unless, hmm. unless uh, the the fire unless is it hot, very poorly. <laughs> Amira looks back and says, "Fire is hot." What, um, uh, what did she get though? I got a fifteen. A fifteen, uh, because Amiri is so strong, and this is like you can see on the card there. It's a level one obstacle. Mm-hmm. This uh, obstacle is uh, not such a big deal that she can't still manage to even like on a pathetic attempt. Uh, she can still manage to. Uh, get the job done. I'm glad that fruit carts don't become heavier as I gain levels. No, they do not. Okay. Uh, you got to get the adamantine fruit cart to, to take care of that. Also, I noticed that I put down one too many tiles here, so I'm going to pull that off there. Oh, good. You're closer to uh, salvation than you thought you were. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so, let's see. I think that uh, Kira is going to see about um, taking out her scimitar and slashing apart the last remains okay. of, of the cart debris. Uh, I'm cool with just doing an athletics check for her as well. All right. That works. So, she's plus 10. That gets me a 15. Okay. Uh, so, that just does it, and uh, you've passed the fruit cart. Yes. The classic stage in every video game. <laughs> All right. And I still have Mauricio and Fumbus uh, to you do, deal with yeah, whatever is next. good headway. Good. Because I don't want to deal with whatever that thing is. All right. We have, oh, it's a lovely guard animal. See, you should have brought Lini. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, those look really angry. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, this uh. is actually, uh, so like chained up to uh, a post outside, kind of like a, a local um, establishment that you identified weeks ago as a front for a cult. Um, you see this kind of a mangy mangy but still quite large and intimidating dog that starts kind of like barking at you uh and is getting ready to kind of rush toward you but it's uh it hasn't quite sprung into action yet uh but it's eyeing you pretty heavily it, it i think it knows you aren't cultists and it's like it's a cultist's pet so they're like in the literal sense this time yeah 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 so it uh it does not take kindly to you interlopers okay well i mean one of the wonderful things is that the people who are really making the noise are amiri and kira behind us mm-hmm. whereas mercial and fumbus are pretty sneaky so we're going to just try and sneak past and hope that uh okay. it bites them instead try to at least get the two of them past. <laughs> exactly right. so i'm going to try stealth from mercial all right Let's see how this goes. That almost turned out to be a one, but that gets me a 21 instead. <laughs> All right, 21. That uh, She's able to sneak past this guard animal fairly uh, fairly adeptly. Good, good, good. Sneak, sneak, sneak. And then Fumbus is... That that worked pretty well. Like, Fum- also sneak, sneak, sneak. F- Fumbus does not animal. Uh-huh. Fumbus has a nature yeah. of plus zero. So. This is significantly larger than Fumbus, this dog. Also dogs. Uh, yeah. No, no, says Goblin. So he's going to sneak, and that gets a 16. Okay. All right. That's just enough. So those two have made it past. You've got two chase points down and you've got two more to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, uh, I, I believe that was the last one. Yes, for the round. it is. Uh, the uh, dark god's flaming form comes around the corner and the dog starts yipping happily uh, oh in excitement uh, and wagging its tail. Uh, in anticipation of the dark god's coming. What what kind of positive reinforcement training did this dog get? <laughs> it's very complicated, but they were really dedicated. Okay. To making sure this, this dog loved the dark gods. Excellent, excellent. All right, so uh, you know what? That gives me an idea then. That gives me an idea. As Kira is going back and forth as to whether or not she's a cultist or a cleric of uh-huh, yeah. is... She's like, dark god apparently makes dog happy. She's going to go back into cultist mode. So okay. I, I'm going to go try and do a religion check to bypass this dog and see if okay. by acting all cult-like, uh, it calms right. down. I'm going to say that's that's a pretty tough one, but you're welcome to give it a shot. 
I'm going to give it a shot. So religion plus 13. That, oh, uh, 26. All right. Uh, I'd set the DC at 20 in my head, so that is sufficient. Um, and I think you've got one more chase point to go. I do. Um, you know what? Amiri actually knows how to animal. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's familiar with how animals work. She she knows how so, to. So the, the the dog is kind of like it's not quite as angry now, and it's like coming up and like sniffing Kira's legs, just like are you are you okay? Are you a good? Uh, you know you 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 made the sign that was part of my training. So, but I don't know you, so I'm still a little suspicious. Uh, Amiri is going to see if uh, she's going to basically do the hashtag uh, you can pet the dog sort of test on uh -huh, this game okay. to see if you can in uh -huh. fact pet the dog in Pathfinder. Uh, so I'm going to attempt a nature check. I think part of her is like hoping it bites her so she has an excuse to fight. I know, just once. <laughs> Why do I not get to sword anything? So I'm going to do a nature check. That gets me a 14. All right, that is what you needed. So the uh, the dog is kind of like, all right, y'all cool, and uh, kind of steps. It uh, it actually pulls out the post. Like oh, wow. It was barely in the ground. It kind of ended, but instead of jumping on Amiri, like she's a little afraid it's going to do, it runs over around the corner and starts like doing circles and like rolls on its back before the the <laughs> dark god. And, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, one of these days we'll have stuff. One of these days we'll have like an entry on one of our monster stat blocks of single action belly rub. Belly rub. There we go. All right. So you've made it past the guard dog. There's only one more obstacle in your way. What is it? Ooh, it's a corrupt guard patrol. So, Ooh. dressed pretty much exactly like the cultists you saw at the barn earlier. There are the the few who were like drew the short straw and didn't get assigned to duty at the barn itself. But now that you're here, they're like, they're like, oh, cool. We do get to do something tonight. We're get, we're gonna get to be the heroes of the whole cult, and they are very uh, motivated to stop you from escaping. I mean, they might be motivated, but I bet they're also really ambitious. Like, this is an opportunity for them to become high priests, and That's Fumbus true. knows it, especially because Fumbus blew up the stage and worked, walked away with some of the candlesticks. Yeah. Um, he's going to basically see about trying to bribe them, and because okay. um, I, I see that's a cool option right here. And All right. You I, use his knowledge of society to try to that's right. grease the wheels. So I'm going to use society that's plus 11. <laughs> that is a 29. All right, so his uh, his little speech there, I'm going to say it's pretty much like what you described there, right? He's kind of saying like, hey, there's opportunity for advancement. They're like, we like advancement. We're high really priests have that. candles. You could have candles. Yeah. Equal high priests. A lot of the pretty other much. high priests are dead. Uh, no Somehow, relation. Somehow, yeah. Uh, so they kind of take these candles and like put them in their robes, and they're like, all right, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you uh, know what else is helpful for advancement? Killing people who are trying to flee the cult. And so they, you know, kind of uh, uh, pull their weapons and get uh, get a little more serious about this. Uh, they're like, we'll maybe let you go to Fumbus. Okay. Uh, stopping people who are killing people who aren't part of the cult, you say, says Mercial, just in luck because we found a couple of those people right behind us. So you'd want to be ready to kill them too. Okay. Uh, so she's instead just going to try to deceive she, them. Exactly. I'm okay. going to try and use deception to just spin the, the uh, target to All somebody right. else. Uh, that's going to use the same DC-18 as that society check there. Okay, so I'm plus nine on uh, deception. All right. uh, that is only a 16, though. Okay, so no progress there, but you didn't lose any points either. So uh, you still got two more to go. And okay. You've got, you've got a bit of a, a window here, so you might be in pretty good shape. Yep, that's all my people for the round. All right. So the, the patrol kind of looks up as uh, this flaming creature comes with a dog kind of running ahead of it like you know being the herald of the of the the horrible uh flaming creation just kind of going arf, 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 trying to you know get people to look out their windows so that, this is a good cult yeah it's it's family you know exactly it's a cozy comfortable cult yeah i can't waste any more time on this cult that looks bad okay so uh yeah i think that Try almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm just thinking about my options just here. Try not to critically fail, and you're in pretty good shape. I should be. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think Mercy at this point, knowing that deception is no longer working, is just going to try to slip past them because now there's this big flaming god that is walking okay. toward them. So I'm sure they're watching that instead of us. They do seem pretty enraptured. Yeah. So let's try and use stealth. This is going to be good. Uh, that is a natural 20 all to right. get a 33. All right. 33. Uh, with a 33... Um, they're distracted and, uh, Mauricio kind of encourages everybody else to give them the slip. 
so you all make it back to uh, your safe house and kind of it, it's this kind of old abandoned church of Saren Ray, which mm-hmm. is kind of like why Cairo is here. She's like, there's something gone wrong here and why her, you know, her her former friend was a part of the cult. And as you kind of run inside, uh, you make it to safety um, and uh, Mauricio can feel that idol just kind of like. The, the outside of it is like melting just from being in this consecrated area. And the whole thing is just kind of turning into like a useless lump. Um, maybe you can still sell the base materials for something, Marcel. But, but it uh, used to be so pretty and valuable. Yeah, uh, sad, sad tale. Um, and uh, you can see behind you this, uh, this, the flame beast kind of goes through these patrol officers and just incinerates them instantly. Uh, and then reaches its hands toward the sanctuary, comes into contact with it, uh, and the flames that make up its body uh, start to turn into, like, blue flame mm-hmm. as the flames of Saren Ray kind of fight back and consume it and just uh, the, the flaming creature dies in flame and just is, is destroyed by the power of divine might. Okay, apparently Saren Ray's still on our side. Good, good, good. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. So that was our example of an infiltration and a chase. Uh, we went a little over time here, but we're going to stick around and maybe answer a few questions if some folks have some Q&A. I think we both got sucked in and just kind of like forgot to look at the time for a little while. Um, <laughs> got got invested in our role playing. Correct. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, particularly about the infiltration or chase rules, um, we can also take some general ones on the game mastery guide. But if you have like other stuff about the game, I think we're going to hold off on those types of questions and just kind of keep it a little more focused here. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, any uh, questions you have, we're going to say one more thing which is uh, this this game table that you've seen us playing on is by Carolina Game Tables. Um, they helped us get this for the studio, so we really appreciate that. Um, if you're looking at your at getting one for yourself, um, go into the Twitch chat or the YouTube description, and you should find some details there on how to get one. Uh, Peyton has just posted a, a refresh of it. So, uh, All right, did we have – we've got one question so far. What are you guys Unless doing – inf- yeah, they're asking, when are you doing infiltration cards? Uh, we have not announced anything like that. That is a pretty neat idea. Mm-hmm. Um, it, infiltration tends to be, because it's so much more involved than a chase, as you could kind of see here, the chase cards is pretty easy to do a randomized deck of it. The infiltration ones, I think we would need enough variety that you can really build different kinds of infiltration uh, out of it, uh, which might be more than like that standard deck can handle. So it might be a bigger product if we did something like that, but that's a, a neat idea. Yeah, I, I found that um, there are certainly some things that you can do for general infiltration ideas, mm-hmm. um, whereas a lot of them, though, are ones that you really want to fit to whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, yeah. If you want to see a long example of an infiltration or a heist, um, I wrote up one in the middle of uh, Pathfinder 149 uh, against the Scarlet Triad, in which it is a high-level infiltration where you're going against basically a level 15 challenge at the time. Um, but that has different things like, oh my gosh, yes, the party hired diviners to constantly sweep for liars yeah. like you. Uh, can you bypass that? And oh no, not everybody is in the same place that we needed to rescue as a complication. Right. So those are tend to be really closely tailored to whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and it's also got like, uh, that's a good example of a presentation of an infiltration because it also has like notable NPCs all uh, kind of broken out. So you can kind of see all the moving pieces that go into one. Yeah. Uh, because, because of what, how we were going about things today, we kind of were going real fast pace where it's like, this is an obstacle, this is an obstacle, but you could totally be doing like a 15 or 20 minute role play session between each round of, of an infiltration. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's one, one of the reasons we kind of like did like the fast version for that is because an infiltration can pretty easily eat a half session or a full session. Mm-hmm. Um, you can really go super deep with them. Uh, I see lava being uh, asking, can the chase rules be abstracted and used as rules for investigation of a criminal eluding capture? Um, so this is like the game is afoot. Let's see about yeah. investigating this scene and this scene and uh, we don't really talk about that specifically with chase rules, though we talk about the probably the closer thing in Game Master Guide is research uh, oh, yeah. because we do have an entire research system and they're all built off the victory point framework. So it's uh, going to be pretty understandable if you've played any of these. You'll have a really good leg up on knowing the next one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the research section there is really going to be super useful for that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, Pharos1968 is asking, can these chase rules be combined easily with the vehicle rules from the GMG? 
Um, because the chases are pretty light on like uh, tactical movement and stuff, and the vehicles are built a little more for that, you're really best off kind of like taking the theme of we are in vehicles and then using the chase rules to do the chase. Um, just because, especially with vehicles, like if you're actually measuring out movement and everything, the distances get so long that you need just like a huge battle mat or something to roll it out or like a larger, like larger scale map. If I were doing a uh, chase with vehicles, the way that I would be inclined to do it is to make it that the vehicle is only relevant for part of the chase. Like we do two chase cards and then we find an opportunity that yeah. if we want to do a higher DC thing, we could steal this vehicle that'll give us an advantage for one or two or three more chase cards yeah, before it crashes and then we start having to run again. Yeah. Um, that and way you, you add yeah. in a dynamic sense to your chase. Yeah, And you could do things like, you know, uh, securing this vehicle not only is chase points for this obstacle, but gives me a uh, a plus one or a plus two on certain other types of things, like if I can narrate how I'm using the vehicle to do it. Like we're trying to smash through this crumbling wall and we think the chariot is going to help us with that, that kind of thing. All right. For the NPCs you're chasing or running from, do they follow the same rules or do they auto progress after every round? Uh, the opposition auto progresses uh, in most cases. We do talk in here a little bit about like if you want both sides to do it, which is a little more common in something like a, a contest. You might want to have them roll or if it's like recurring NPCs that you want to have be, you know, about on par with your PCs. Those are cases where you might want to roll. But generally, uh, just because it's kind of boring to have the GM roll a whole bunch and we have some idea of like how far we expect you to get in a given round. Um, usually we we say just move the opposition one step each time. And one of the things that I've seen in uh, Pathfinder Society organized play games is that uh if your NPC is also doing checks to proceed, then there's a good chance that they will either do terribly or do terribly well. And that way it either turns the chase into something that ends very quickly or something that the PCs have no chance of ever catching up yeah. on. So having them auto progress every round gives a fairly reliable challenge to what you're doing. Yeah, it's kind of the same principle why we don't do opposed roles. Uh, in Pathfinder 2 because the randomness is so high that it can really lead to like weird, unsatisfying uh, outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just a reminder for the chase system, uh, there are four different uh, types of chases uh, listed here and it kind of tells you how to set, e set up each one. Mm -hmm. There's chase down where you're pursuing someone as the PCs. There's run away where someone is pursuing the PCs. There's beat the clock, which is you have a certain number of rounds to get through all the obstacles. Um, and then there's, which is, you know, effectively it's the same thing as, you know, the other options. Uh, but it's just a little more like there's a literal time limit rather than uh, the pursuit limit. And then there's a competitive chase, which is the both sides are trying to get through at the same rate. Uh, did we have some more questions? Here? Uh, yeah, we have one from uh, Runatib. How well would these work for something like the regatta in Skull and Shackles? Um, so I'm not as familiar with that adventure path, but I get the sense of what you're doing. It's basically like a long-term sailing race. Um, you could probably abstract the, the chase rules or at the very least the victory point rules into uh, running the regatta. Um, you're just probably going to be looking at a more at a tighter list of skills that are going to be appropriate because it can be a little hard depending upon your circumstances to come up with a reason why occultism might apply whereas for many infiltrations or chases it's a good idea to vary up the skills as much as you can so that you can be sure that everybody has something to contribute um yeah. toward the end of that infiltration for example we did today amiri didn't have a whole lot to be doing she could certainly have come up with some some ideas, but, and she did toward the end, but, um, having those athletics and intimidation sorts of options means that she has her chance in the sun. Yeah. And you could also do something like if the regatta is really long-term, uh, or you had like, it's a, it's a race that is like between continents, right? It's really abstracted. You might have something like we're running this chase in the background, but we're doing other scenes during the session. So it's like, we deal with the, the long-term, goal like once per session mm -hmm. or once every hour of play or something but in between we're doing a bunch of other stuff so that you can kind of uh show that time scale a little better so i see another one from joe jungers uh are these are there static advantages for example the party is faster than the opposition so let's say like all of our party had speed 40 yeah um, um there aren't kind of like there aren't a whole bunch of like defined ones but there is uh like it is kind of up to the gm to decide whether that's kind of enough of an advantage that it 
uh, that it's always going to matter. In that case, what I would probably do is just kind of say like they start ahead or they or you know they get to jump ahead once during the chase or something like that. Um, and that's also kind of assuming that a lot of the uh, of the chase is kind of like on flat ground is fairly easy to navigate because the chase just brings in obstacles that come in your way and kind of assumes there are quite a few of those during the chase. Uh, and a lot of those obstacles, it doesn't matter how fast you are because you're not you're still going to have to climb the wall even if you are fast at doing so. Although I like the one of the suggestions that comes up in chat about maybe changing the number of points needed or what mm -hmm. I might even do is just how infiltrations have edge points, I might give the PCs a couple of chase edge points yeah. and say, at any point in the chase, you can spend one of these to fill out one more of the successes needed. Yeah. Um, your, your chance to really book it through an area. Right. Yep. All right. Well, uh, that's pretty good number of yeah. questions. Yeah, and... I think we, we've got one more question we'll oh, yeah. just cover real quickly. Um, can chase rules be used with downtime rules when competing with other businesses or craftspeople when competing for a goal? Huh. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say chase rules in that in that instance, but I do think you could use the victory point rules to to model that uh, pretty well. Um, with a similar kind of race to the top, I would just kind of flavor them differently. I wouldn't call them chase points, uh, but it could be a similar kind of thing where, especially if it's like um, the obstacles are challenges of the market. Mm -hmm. Or say for crafts people, say it's you're going on a cooking show and these are the dishes you have to make. And here's why each of these is challenging, um, especially because that kind of thing. That's another one where getting a variety of skills involved and getting the whole group involved is a little more challenging because mm -hmm. if it's your, you're in a baking contest, then it's like you can do a few things like I need someone to go gather the right ingredients and they need to either use society or nature to get those ingredients. But fundamentally, you're probably going to have to make a cooking lore check at some point. Or occultism. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you could ask <laughs> ask a dark entity for uh, for a cake, a barren yeah. bread. Yes. <laughs> well, on that note, um, I think we're we're going to call it there. Um, thank you very much, John, for bringing the infiltration. Uh, uh, reminder: I'm Logan Bonner, the Pathfinder lead designer, and I'm John Compton, Starfinder senior developer. Uh, and you can find everything about infiltration and chases in the Game Master Guide, which is out right now. And those chase cards, if you want to use those to kind of quickly put together some chases, those are going to come out next month. So, All right. Great. Good gaming with Thanks, everybody. everybody.